Welcome to Jazz Time. JazzTime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at JazzTime.com. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Deep Sea Sea Dweller Reference 136660D Blue James Cameron Edition. I'm going to talk to you about the bezel, the dial, the case, the bracelet, the movement, give you a little bit of history, compare it to some other things, try it on, and then give you my thoughts. So let's start. This watch is the Rolex Deep Sea. And the Deep Sea line is the largest of the Rolex sports line. And the Deep Sea is supposed to be a diving watch. The Rolex makes many different sports watches. They make the Submariner, the GMT, so on and so forth. But the Deep Sea is their largest and it has the it can go the deepest in the water, hence the name Deep Sea. Now the Deep Sea was released in uh, late 2000s, I want to say around 2008 or 2009, and has gone through seven, several different variations to get to the point that we're at now. The first deep sea, I think was, uh, as I said, maybe 2008 or something, or maybe a little earlier than that. And it was the reference 116660. And it looked just like this, except the most notably, the, the bracelet was not as big as this one is the bracelet was using a basically a submariner bracelet they changed that and they also uh, updated the movement in the newer version 126660 which was around for i want to say seven years or so and just recently in 2023 they've released the deep sea which is what are the deep sea reference 136660 which is what you're looking at right now so let's talk about what makes this watch different from its pre predecessor and talk about this watch a bit now since i told you we'll start with the case the case itself is a stainless steel case it's made of 904l steel which is the 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 strong the strongest best most anti-corrosive steel that you can possibly get and rolex of course uses uses that it's 44 millimeters that's the longest distance across the bezel from the eight o'clock to the two o'clock position the longest distance of 44 millimeters so i would say that people that or men because i believe this is a men only watch if uh if you have a wrist size of at least 7.5 millimeters then or sorry 7.5 inches then this watch is suitable for you usually guys with wrist size of 7.5 mil 7.5 uh, inches is approximately uh, 180 pounds or larger okay as, as a guideline i think if you have that size wrist then definitely you can consider a 44 millimeter if you don't you should probably consider a sea dweller and if it's even smaller you should consider a submariner okay so this is this watch is for big boys all right okay now that's that's uh 14 44 millimeters the longest distance they don't make any other i'm sorry actually they do make one uh other watch it's even bigger than this it's part of the deep sea collection it's called the deep sea challenge it's actually 50 millimeters so you got to be a really big boy to wear that one okay or you can put it on your foot um okay so let's let me turn it on its side now the side profile on this on this watch if you check it by millimeters, it's, it's quite thick. I think it's around a 14.5 millimeters or so, but it doesn't look that thick. When you turn it on its side, surprisingly, it looks, you know, uh, not that thick. And if you compare it to some other watches, such as the Royal Oak Offshore, it's about the same. The Royal Oak Offshore is, is also around 14.5 15 to 15.5 millimeters in thickness, and it doesn't look that thick. So yes, it, while it's thick compared to a um a uh submariner um you know it's not really that thick altogether okay at least i don't think it looks that that thick um actually you know what i'm sorry i'm reading here it says uh the thickness is all the way up to 17 millimeters okay i guess it is pretty thick um 
yeah, I guess it is pretty thick. But it, somehow it doesn't look that thick. I just looked it up right now. So the offshores, uh, offshores right now are 15.5 millimeters, and this one is 18 millimeters. Let me give you another reference. The Richard Mille, um, one of their thicker watches, which is the 6501, which is known to be like kind of a fat watch, it's actually uh, only 16 point something millimeters. So it's actually bigger. But you know what? For some reason, it just doesn't look that big on it. Maybe it's the, the proportions, the way they set it up. Um, okay, well, anyways. So yeah, it's a thick watch. So you're not going to be wearing this under no suit cuff. You know, this is a, a, a tool watch or a sports watch. It's something that you'll be wearing, you know, or if you're a big boy, then you'll be wearing something like this. Okay. Okay, so let's, that's, that's about the case. And, uh, oh, from top to bottom, 12, uh, the 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock, the longest distance across the lug is actually um, 51.5 or, or sorry, 55.7 millimeters. So if you compare this to the Richard Mill 6501, which is one of their biggest, if not, not their biggest um, current collection, is actually only 50 millimeters. So it's actually even bigger than the Richard Mill. So if you thought Richard Mills were big, well, then the deep sea is even bigger. But you know what? That's not a bad thing. They got to make sizes for everybody, small, medium, large, extra large, because there are different size people. Some people are very big. So they need to make very big watches, hence this deep sea. Okay, they should have called it the big C because it's actually very, very big. Okay, so now we've talked about the case. I told you it's um, 44 millimeters in, di in diameter, 55 millimeters lug to lug, and 17.7 millimeters in thickness. That's a big monster. Okay, you got to be a big boy to wear this watch. Now, the case, of course, is a monoblock middle case with a screw down case back. It has a Rolex ring system, by the way, which, which also has a helium escape valve. So if I turn it on its side, you can see this little helium escape valve. I don't know exactly all the details of how this works, but basically, as I understand, when you go down and dive, there's our gases in there or something. And when you come up, it lets it out. Something along those lines. Okay. Um, Anyways, it has that, so all good. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the bezel. Now, here's what has changed. Oh, you know what? Before we get to the bezel, since we're talking about the case, uh, I believe they slimmed down the case from, from the 116660 version to the 1266. They slimmed the case down a little bit, so the lugs are a little bit skinnier. I believe that's one of the, the changes that they made. Now, since we're talking about the, now we're moving on to the bezel. The bezel is a ceramic bezel, and it's uh, basically scratch-proof. And it has this uh, white, the, the markers here are all in white. Uh, but if you look carefully, the graduations here are coded in PVD, physical vapor deposition. And actually, what gives it this white color is a thin layer of platinum. Interestingly enough, they, they I don't know why they use platinum, probably to give it this beautiful shine, but it definitely is working. Okay, now um, the bezel is a 60 minute graduated and it's unidirectional, rotatable bezel so, so that you don't think you have more air than you actually have. Most dives are 60 minutes or less, so that makes sense. And what else I can tell you about this bezel, what is different though, between the 126660, which is what this one replaces, this is the 136660, the bezel here is a little bit skinnier. The old bezel, and I, I'm glad they did this because the old bezel looked a little bit too fat. The proportions on it were a little bit not right. The bezel looked so fat and it made the watch proportionally look a little bit awkward. Now with this new version, the 136660, which is what you see in front of you here, the bezel has been slimmed down. And what do I mean by the bezel? I mean the insert, the black part. It's skinnier if you compare it to the old version, which makes the dial just opens up the dial and I think it makes the proportions on this just look better. Okay. That is, so that's one major change between this, this version, the current version and the old version. Okay. Now let's go ahead and talk about the bracelet. The bracelet is the oyster bracelet doesn't come on any other bracelet. Okay. And 
it's not like Jubilee or, or Oyster Flex or anything like that. It just comes on this uh, Oyster bracelet that you see, and it's all brushed finish, no high polish, which makes sense because this watch is meant to be worn in the ocean, and you don't, why, why should you have a blingy uh, watch in the ocean? Okay, now, from the old version, the very first version that came out in 2008, 116660, the bracelet was too small. It was using a 20 millimeter watch or a bracelet, I believe, same bracelet that was used on the Submariner, but the watch is 44, is 10% bigger, didn't make any sense. So they changed that in the next version, 126660. The bracelet, I believe, is 21 or 22 millimeters, and it just fits the watch, makes it the taper look much nicer and perfect, actually. But what else did they change in the 136660, which is what you see here, the current model, is they got rid of that silly glide lock clasp um, they used to have this, not the glide lock clasp, sorry, the diver extension. The glide lock clasp is necessary because you need to be able to change it to put it over the wetsuit or under the wetsuit or if your hand expands or whatever. But it used to have this really lame uh, diver extension, which nobody used. And in fact, when people came to our office to buy this watch at jazztime.com, because of course you can pick this watch up if you're in Orange County, I would actually have to take that glide lock, uh, that that diver extension out because people didn't use it. It was it, it actually made the bracelet look very funny, and um, it just looked lame to be honest. And a lot of people took them out, and now Rolex wised up and they took it out, so there's no longer that diver extension. So, but you can, you do have this uh, glide lock, which is an excellent option. You pull up on the top here, and then you pull out, and it it allows the uh, bracelet to make some changes to it in, in terms of uh, length. It's a great idea without having to use any tools. So you can slide it over your cuff, under your cuff, you know, whatever, or size it to whoever. So I think that's a great idea. Okay, so let's move on to the movement here. The movement is your standard 3235. It's the same thing as the old version, uh, 126660. It is uh, precise to plus minus two seconds a day. It has a power reserve of 70 hours. Nothing extraordinary there. 3235 is a standard movement that Rolex uses in basically almost all of their watches. It's an excellent movement, so there's not a whole lot to say about it other than it's a great movement. Okay, let's go ahead and try this guy on. I, oh, you know what? I should mention one other thing. The crystal, okay, the crystal is the dome part. Now, the crystal is actually 5.5 millimeters in thickness. That's actually massive, considering uh, if you, like, think about, for example, like the AP Audemars Piguet uh, Ultra Thin uh, watch, it's about 8 millimeters. This is 5 millimeters, almost 6. So the, the crystal itself is... Is almost as large as some watches and if you compare like the submariner which is approximately 12 millimeters the crystal is is almost half of that so, so the crystal alone here is 5.5 millimeters makes sense that the watch itself will be uh, up to um, 17.8 millimeters and what else you can know about this crystal is actually domed it's not flat it's domed which uh, you know, they don't make any domed crystals on Rolex. This is the only domed crystal that I can think of. It probably has some, some reason to do with uh, water tightness or, or something like that. But it's, uh, as you can imagine, pretty much impossible to scratch and it's super thick. As I said, it probably has something to do with uh, you know waterproofness. The watch itself is actually waterproof to 3,900 meters or 12,800 feet which I believe is that the longest distance, uh, that's how far it is to the Mariana Trench. Am I not mis am I wrong about that? It can go down to the Mariana Trench? I'm not so sure. Somebody uh, let me know about that. Okay, now let's get to my thoughts here. Um, and let me try it on, of course. I am six foot tall, 200 pounds. My wrist is 7.5 inch, 7.5 inches, and this watch fits me perfectly. I would be the type, I, I believe that I am the minimum size for somebody to wear this watch. If you're anything smaller, as I said, you can go with a, a smaller watch. But at my size, 7.5, 200 pounds, there's plenty of guys that are 200 pounds, and the watch fits perfect. I, I think it's a great tool watch, sports watch, watch that you could wear, throw around, be very rough and tough with it. It's pretty much indestructible. I mean, heck, it, could go, it can go to the bottom of the ocean. So it's a pretty darn good watch. Now, 
I, I thought you I was going to give you my thoughts. Well, the Rolex basically makes the Sea Dweller, then uh, or sorry, the Deep Sea, which is 44, the Sea Dweller, which is 43, and the Submariner, which is 40. To me, it's basically all one line. It's 40, 42, 43, 44, and you just choose whichever size fits you the best. Never mind what it can do or however they market it. It basically all looks like a very similar watch. And of course, oh, I forgot to mention the dial. The dial. How can I? How can I forget? You know what? This dial is also very special. Um, before let's talk about this. You know, the dial is the D blue. It's a K James Cameron edition. They also make it in a flat black. This one is special. Why? Because the top part is blue and it fades down toward black, like a deep sea. Hence the name deep sea. You know, and it the the dial. It's the only dial that Rolex does with this this blue, blue black gradient. In fact, it's the only watch that they do with any gradient. You know, and it's I think it's so special, and it mimics the ocean, kind of like lighter at the top and you know darker at the bottom. I mean, you know, the only thing they could have done maybe extra is maybe put an island at the top or something. I don't know. Maybe put put the Titanic at the bottom. I'm just kidding. But anyways they made it look like an actual deep sea and i think if you're going to get the deep sea you kind of have to go with the actual james cameron special edition which is what you see here as opposed to the black the black is great but uh i think the blue is better okay all right so anyways let's get back to my thoughts uh i think this watch is fantastic for those who are are big guys and you know at this price point to get a rolex that looks super rugged uh I think it's a, a, a very good value proposition. Now, this is not a dress watch. You're not going to be wearing this with your suit. Um, and you're going to be wearing this in a sporting type manner. So, you know, or diving or any type of uh, casual wear, you know, not dress wear, not suits, not um, formal wear. And but but for that function, it, it can really do it. You can take this to the beach. You can take it to um, a lot of things. And it's uh, very well priced. So, and actually, it's selling above retail. This watch, as of 23, is still still selling above retail. And I don't see that changing anytime soon because the watch is very popular. It's, uh, you know, selling for 14.5K uh, retail USD. And it's going for a little uh, around 16, 17 on the green market. And by the way, if you want to buy this watch, click on the link in the description below to buy it at jazztime.com, which is why we're making this video, not so you can watch it and then go buy it somewhere else. We want you to buy it at jazztime.com, which is the whole purpose of making this video. So please go to jazztime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.